Hey, what's happening all you shaman fans out there? I'm Deuce Diz Din, coming back at you again with more Shaman King. This time, we are checking out the difference between the aftermath of Yo versus Ren. When it came to the actual adaptations of all of this, I would really say that the manga version is just the way to go. That's the proper version to check out when it came to that fight because of the impact of having a lot of the Shaman Fight contestants commentate on how they felt about the battle of Yo versus Ren. There's a a lot of things in that moment that really just highlight why Yo and Ren seem to be the people to beat. Whereas with the other adaptions, they don't really do much in terms of highlighting that Yo and Ren seem to be fairly exceptional warriors in all of this. Now, here we're checking out Volume 8, ch Chapter 65, Night in the Flame. Episode 20 of the original Shaman King anime, halfway through that as Yo vs. Ren took up half of this episode, and episode 10 of the new 2021 anime, Night in the Flame. So, we get to see that half of what makes up the original Shaman King anime is what it takes for the new anime to actually get through. So, looking at it from that point of view, oh, should we be able to adapt about 30 episodes of the original Shaman King into this. You know, it should be able to get to about 30 episodes for the new series, and then it'll be all just manga content from episode 30 onward. No guarantees on any of that, but it just seems to be the way things are going. So let's jump in on another What's the Difference? So, the chapter and the anime, new anime at least, open up with the shaman fight, uh, you know, basically being over the preliminaries, and it's about to get into the next round of things, and they're about to announce where it'll be taking place, and you get to see previews of all of the shaman. Ultimately, a lot of these guys in the newer anime will actually be incorporated into the series, whereas with the manga, not so much. Oddly enough, the older anime kind of cuts out the fact that Yo kind of dwells on the fact that his life will never be the same after the shaman fight, and a lot of that is weighing on him. The older anime seem to have just wanted to go into the celebration. Yeah, we had our victory, we did the deed, everything is moving forward. I hate the fact that they've cut out this nice little peaceful moment between Yo and Anna, because he's having this kind of existential crisis. How should I feel? You know, what is reality? Going back to school, what is School. Is there even a purpose in being here? It just seems so surreal. Where with Anna, you know, she's kind of come to accept that, look, you just need to keep moving forward. Go for what you want. Continue forward. Do your do. Also, you have hellish training coming up, so deal with that. Uh, it's a little bit funnier in the manga. And then we pick up with the party going on. You know, Kampai and all that good stuff. You know, everyone's having a good time and all that. It's very unclear in the manga if he's drinking soda or not, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. And I prefer the way that it is in the manga and stuff because, you know, Ren being involved in all of this is kind of surreal. It's just like, come on, let's... Let's point this out at least a little bit. Ren being here is weird, but in the n older anime, it's just treated like, of course he's here. Why wouldn't he be here? It's just like, no, this is weird. This is very weird. Address this. Address the insanity of this all. Yeah, and this is Horohoro and Tao Ren's first meeting, and it's funny because they become like really kind of close to a certain degree to a minor extent. It's a weird relationship. A very, very weird relationship. I really do prefer Manta pointing out, like, y you're not friends, come on. I do enjoy Basson 
just really kind of being taken aback by this relationship though just you know he knows Ren he knows that deep down Ren is a good person at heart but because of the nature of how he's been raised it's not portrayed as well as it could be it, it's really nice it's a sweet moment and I'm glad each decided to keep that and of course Anna's being very stingy about the whole events of all of this it's unfortunate <laughs> Uh, I, a little bit of Tamao kind of being a little shy around Yo. You know, she's infinitely shy. And I love this moment where everyone's picking up on the fact of that. Um, we kind of cut out the fact that Tom uh, is the one who, you know, set up the bath for everyone. Because she basically works here for the most part. And then you have the moment with the hot spring and all of that. Uh, naked, uh, stop showing me naked little boys. It's weird. It's weird. Oh my goodness. It it's a surreal endeavor. You know, at least with the original anime they want to make it seem like there's a little bit of camaraderie and skinship and they're forcing Ren into it. Whereas in the newer anime and the other series, he's just kind of rolling with it for the most part. You know, Ren just kind of takes it all in stride. It's kind of fun. It's some fun stuff. I, I kind of like the relationship that goes on here. They even kind of cut out a little bit of a moment where the girls are beat up Punchy and Crunchy because they were trying to be pervs. <laughs> but you know, everybody in being in their bathwear is actually kind of nice for the most part. It it's cute. It's really super duper cute. And yeah, the fact that it was cut out is understandable because little creepy spirits creeping on girls is not okay. Don't do that, children. And in the old anime, they actually just kind of spend the night for the most part. Whereas in the older, the newer anime and the manga, you know, Ren just kind of departs. He doesn't stick around too long. He doesn't linger on all of this. But it's him kind of coming to a certain mindset. You know, he's invited to stay the night. And he has these sweet little moments. And then he kind of leaves later on. As a little bit of time passes. I like this moment between the two of them. You know. But I feel it's more relatable when Yo had that moment of being like, Hey, I have to think about the trials and tribulations that are coming up soon. But it's kind of brushed to the side a little bit in terms of the other series. And like, There's a lot of contemplation for Ren and Yo that is kind of cut out of the older series. It's still present to some degree, you know, it'll be addressed a little bit later. But I like that, you know, the manga and the newer anime actually decide to kind of solidify the friendship between Yo and Ren. That Ren actually was willing to pursue a lot of this. Now we're getting into chapter 66, Sutras at Sunset. And a couple of unknown figures slowly approach. I like that. I like that the setup of the boys is kind of introduced. Whereas with the older anime, you know, Anna is, you know, she they finally have that talk they should have had. Um, there, there's not much to it, but at the same time they're showing off the sweeter nature of Anna. But... For some reason, I guess they've decided to cut out or rearrange the boys' introduction in terms of the series. You know, there, there's a lot of stuff that the older anime decided to cut out, and I'm actually kind of curious as to why they decided to do that. You know, what was lost on this series? You know, it's very fascinating. There's actually a lot that's been rearranged from the older series, so just going to go ahead with the um, other adaptions till I get there. You have Tama and uh, Yo shopping, you know, buying all this stuff here and there. <laughs> Going a little bit over budget. The boys kind of scoping them out and following them. Yeah, I, I kind of like this little bit of a moment between the two of them. It's nice. But it's actually kind of funny because, you know, Anna kind of snaps at the fact that it's the two of them getting all more or less lovey-dovey. But at the same time, it's just like, Anna, you don't go out and shop. So you shouldn't be complaining about any of this. And it really does add a lot of context to the more softer moments that we see 
and a lot of these sections. And then they take a shortcut through a shrine and all that. And it can, uh, Tamao continues to get her hopes up for the most part. And then we have these assholes, Ren and Stimpy ass motherfuckers. I like the fact that in the manga we at least get to see that Tamao actually kind of stands up for herself against uh, Pochi and Kochi where she can for the most part. But then we have the arrival of the boys. And I love the way they're... Sh I prefer it where their car just kind of appears out of nowhere instead of just being resting atop their shrine for the most part. But you still kind of question how it would have actually gotten all the way up there. It's actually kind of funny. <laughs> I love this little bit of comedy, but comedy between all of them. And then you have the introduction of the two coolest characters in this series. Freaking speakers on a hearse. Blaspheming all over this stuff. I love the way the boys look. Honestly, the fact that the older anime decided to kind of change up their look, I'm just like, ah, oh, come on, guys. You know, rock and roll monks are fun and cool. It, it's a cool little bit of a gimmick for the most part. You know, these guys who are just kind of trace, tr tracing their fame for the most part. Trying to get that little bit of a gimmick going to bring them into the spotlight. Yes, love the way they rock out. Honestly, there's something kind of nice about both versions for the most part. Cause it's, just, it's a funny little situation. Singing a sutra, you know, Buddhist chants and all that. It's something far out there. You know, sending Pochi and Kochi to heaven. It's just like good riddance, never come back. Pass on, you little shits. On this mission to rid the world of evil spirits and all that. You know, that's why they're trying to become shaman kings in order to rid the world of evil spirits and rock out too. And because of what they saw during the preliminary matches, they know that Yo is a tough customer to go up against. So they figure they'll just send his spirit to the great beyond and be done with it. And then their new song, Chimichimi Morio, that sends out these barrage of these little insect and creature-like spirits spirits of nature and it's, they're basically a nuisance they're not like really strong they're just kind of crafty and all over the place and then yo ends up losing his um his uh tablet that contains the soul of amita maru which is kind of like man shouldn't you uh have that a little bit more on lock we enter into chapter 67, Wandering Blue Spirit. And of course, they tried to do it when Anna wasn't around because if she were present, she'd easily be able to bring his soul right on back or stop them. It's actually pretty funny. It's just like, yeah, I mean, if you can't beat him, send him to the great beyond. Just do away with him. And without his spirit, his guardian spirit, it's just kind of like, well... There's only so much you can do at this point. He gets mobbed by the Chimimorio. Honestly, you know, because Tamao also had Pochi and Kochi set to heaven. Despite the fact that they're little shits, they can't really... She can't really get involved at this point. And then here we get to see a different application for Furyoku. Which allows him to interact with Oversouls despite the fact that he's not using a medium or any of that. It's actually pretty fun, but then again, they're only so powerful themselves. The boys are nothing to write home again. Yes. And then boom, 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 go rushing through. Only for him to be defended to some degree in some way by a mysterious figure. Oddly enough, the older anime kind of makes it look like he never actually stepped out. Yes, Ryu. They cut out him smoking, though, because, again, he's oh underaged, actually. Like, that's the funny thing. It's just like, that's how you know he's underage, because they cut out the fact that he smokes a lot. You know, that, that's an emphasis thing on young punks back in the day. They would always smoke cigarettes and stuff. And the revelation that Ryu has become a shaman. I love the fact that in the manga, it, his you know, collar and, you know, cummerbunds and whatever um, are a moderate length. They're kind of absurdly long, but not too, too long. In the anime, oh no, they are long as shit. Long to an absurd degree. Uh, 
honestly it's a bit of a thing from shot to shot depending on where you see it especially in terms of the manga it's actually pretty fun to see Ryu in this light just how powerful he can really be and then they run off chapter 68 road to the Tao stronghold and then you get a little bit of a glimpse of he who shall not be named although the spirit of fire looks completely different once you compare what he looks to like nowadays to what he looked to back then <laughs> and i love manta's reaction to wooded sword ryo being a shaman in and of his own right but he has the oracle bell and all that good stuff you know, like bam he got that bling and it's purple too big pimpin also the fact that he was in fact standing there in fact the manga had several shots of him being there where you just couldn't see his face. And I love the thought. It's just like Tokugaro, of all people, you made your spirit. That is so wild. But it's also kind of fitting. There's just something about there. The two of them together, that's a little out there. I love the fact that Tokugaro continues to try to act like this hard-ass villain. But it, deep down, it's just kind of like, oh no. He's, a, he's a kind of a big softy deep down. Especially when he gets a little thanks. And, and once again, Horo Horo ends up meeting up with another ally of Yo's. And they're just still hanging around. I guess that's why the original anime had that emphasis so much of the two of them just hanging in the Asagura household because they really do that after a while in the manga just hanging in the Asagura house I don't know it, it's nice though oh and Yo just showing his appreciation it's sweet yes wooden sword Ryu best of the best of the best and then Anna immediately brings them down with reality it's just like listen y'all need to start training a little bit also the whole Tamao and Yo going out dating more or less and then we pick up with the whole situation with um Ren, which certain aspects of it are kind of cut out for um, the situation with the older anime. They don't really go too deep into it. Also kind of cut out the fact that it was kind of cold at the time. You know, and the old granny that they end up meeting up with. And then she's got a little meat bun for him. You know, help cheer him up just a little bit. And whereas Basson thinks, oh no, he's going to be in a bad mood. He's going to really hate this. He's like, oh no, he takes it. He eats it. It's it's a meat bun. Come on. It's it's delicious. You know, the first the signs of Ren just kind of lightening up for the most part. And then Ren just having this existential crisis. You do see the old lady in the original anime, but he does she he doesn't offer the bun. I, the offering of the bun is important. You must offer the bun. Uh, also the older anime kind of cuts out the thought of Ren having actually killed a lot of people. They just cut it out wholesale. I don't think they, you know, because I guess they don't want Ren to have that burden of being a murderer on his soul. But, you know, I prefer that he have that little bit of darkness, that regret that he followed his family, did these terrible things, and it weighs upon his very soul. You know, his want to change the world, to do something positive. And him having this unfinished business to attend to. Yes, and his resolve to defeat his father. The one who instilled the hate within him. And I love that dramatic shot of him just standing atop the cliffside. Looking at this army of Jiang Zhi. You know, just different models and forms. And just weaponry all over the place. Intimidating sight. Oh, and you just pan up. Both versions doing the exact same thing. The pan up to just see. Oh, yes. I love it. Good stuff. You do get to see a little bit of it in the older anime. But the manga really doesn't do it enough justice. Honestly, the fact that the a newer anime decided to cut it off there before he actually, you know, got in full against Taohan is really unfortunate. You know, there's a lot that it just decided not to showcase, show off. Ah, man, it, it's a shame. It's a shame. Ended up skipping over a lot of stuff from the old anime because they jump ahead a lot 
and you actually do get to see a little bit of the fights that Ryu had as he was making his way up in the Shaman Tournament. That is something I really do enjoy seeing. It's just like, not to mention the fact that, you know, he was being overseen by Silva as well as Yo's dad, which, you know, I, I, it's nice. It's a nice little bit of flavor text for the most part. You know, and Yo's dad not wanting to meet up with his son. What is with anime and dads who just don't want to see their sons? Just see your damn son, come on! And then the older anime has the arrival of the boys, and they send all the spirits of Funbari Hill up to heaven, which should be a nice thing, but it's just kind of like, what the shit, guys? Oh, uh, and then this stuff like why why have you chosen to be so perverted yep and then she just beats up pochi and gochi for being pervs pervy little assholes they head off to do the thing which we'll address later down the line but as they make their way through funbari hill they notice hey weirdly enough ain't no spirits around here what the dealio and then you have the introduction of the boys in the original series, where honestly, uh, only the one looks like a monk, whereas the other one looks like a traditional priest, so they just have a religious vibe going on. And I'm just like, no, rocker monks, they're supposed to be rocker monks. Also, I looked it up and they are voiced by different people, ultimately. But they still have the mission of spending spirits back where they belong. And I'm pretty sure they have different, somewhat different names too. <laughs> They're goofs too. Yeah, I think they have a different name. Zenryo? <laughs> like, come on, no! You had something really fun there before. And she completely decided to do away with. And I'm just like, no! They had a great gimmick going for the most part. Honestly. The Buddhist prayer from the other series, it rocks a little bit harder in the old series. It's kind of fun. And then Pochi and Kochi go to heaven. Good riddance. He even gets to the point where Amida, Maru, and Basan pass on to the afterlife. And then you have their whole thing as just like what they've been up to, sending spirits to the great beyond. They don't have to battle them. And then Shimichimi Morio! Honestly, this fight goes a lot differently in the in the original anime because you know, we have more spirits around, but the boys are a little bit more resourceful in the original anime, I guess you could say, even though they're a lot goofier there. Honestly, Chimichimi Morio in the original version is much better, but you can barely hear it in that version either. Then he still has the moment where he bursts free and all that good stuff. Yo really shows off his Furioku prowess. And he's friggin' pissed because of what happened to Aminamaru. And then of course the mention of how. But it, it see, comes off as a bit more of a desperate struggle in the original anime because they've already sent Amitamaru to the Great Beyond. Whereas in the manga and the newer series, it's just kind of like, eh. You know, he's captured and there's the threat of what could happen. And then, of course, the arrival of Bokuto no Ryu. Yes, the arrival of Bokuto no Ryu. Although his pompadour has gained a lot more heft in the older anime, in the revelation that he's a shaman. And in the original anime, he just cuts through their weaponry. Whereas in the manga and the newer anime, he cuts through their friggin' hearse, through a friggin' car. He does some ren shit. Yeah, you really get to see the strength of Ryu. And the arrival of Silva. It, it's it's a who's who of people coming out of the woodwork. The arrival of more of House followers. And then, of course, you still have the preview of the Spirit of Fire. Although, I really have to point out how differently the Spirit of Fire looks in each version. You know, in the original manga, Spirit of Fire is a lanky-looking motherfucker for some reason. 
because this was the mangaka slowly working it out. Each version you see over the different adaptions comes because of the fact that he was developing what the Spirit of Fire looked like more and more as things went on. So the original anime, this lanky kind of humanoid looking thing, okay. The original anime, it's still very lanky, but you know, it looks a little bit more like a robot kind of, but it's still kind of ambiguous to a certain degree. In the new anime, you have the finalized design of the Spirit of Fire with all the details and, you know, the cybernetic look to it and all that. The design is finalized, like, and it looks hefty. Big and hefty. That's the thing. The ultimate design that was settled on for the Spirit of Fire, he is a chonker of a big boy. He is biggest boyest. And then the comment about, oh, Ryu is in the shaman fight too, and he's partnered with Tokigero of all people. Now well, that's fascinating. And Ryu finally tells the tale of him becoming a shaman and all that good stuff. Yeah, and I like the fact that he's ultimately on board with saving Ren. It's... You know, I, I like the fact that ultimately we get to see a bit of Ryu's character. It's nice, but, you know, I like it better in a more casual setting. You know, not when they're desperately needing to go and save Ren. And then Anna arrives in order to bring Amitamaru Basan and the rest of them back. All the spirits who were forced to leave when they didn't want to. It really is kind of messed up that they just forced him into the great beyond. And that's it. It's a fascinating situation, and breaking it up the way they did, I don't know if I'm on board with it. Because having the encounter with the boys be a little bit more casual makes it feel a little bit more like, okay, this was the competition scoping him out, this was the preliminary strike of how, and all that. You know, I, I don't like it being in the middle of something else is going on. You know, that takes away any memorability of the boys. It makes them feel more like, oh god, these guys, can we just hurry up and get to Ren already? And all that. You know, and that's why I prefer the manga and the newer adaptions way of introducing the boys. It's a nicer way of doing things, and it gives a lot more highlight to Ryu. You know, that way later on, when you have the whole situation with Ren, you can focus on that fully. There's no detours or anything. You focus on Ren when you need to focus on Ren. But that brings an end to this a little bit of what's the difference. Tell me what was your favorite way of working in this adaption. Do you like the fact that the older anime introduced the boys just as we were going off to try to help out Ren? Or do you like it better where it's, well, much like I do, where it's just like, hey, we had the shaman fight, we had the introduction of the, you know, soon we'll know where the, the rest of the fight will take place. You know, the shamans get a little bit of a respite from all of that. We have the encounter with the boys who are trying to take down the competition. In comes Ryu to show off what he's got. You know, nothing but focus on Ryu. Now, that's the thing. What has Ryu been doing this entire time? I guess the older anime felt that wasn't necessary because we had been following what Ryu was doing up until this point. But, you know, despite the fact that the older anime did show and develop and, you know, put an emphasis on how much of a struggle Ryu had been going through, at the same time, it takes away from the you know, ultimate finished project of him introducing himself to Yo, and he's finally managed to get on the same level as Yo, but you can't dwell on it enough because we immediately have to go into something else. Give Ryu his spotlight and then give Ren his spotlight. That's the way I think it should work. But again, comments in the comment section below. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what your favorite part of it was, or don't. I ain't your daddy, but I still love you like one. And until next time, I've been Deuce Diz Din, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.